running and he comes back somebody in the face and this time it was Sting and as a result of that Triple H came out on top with the win they shake hands nothing was done with it after and Sting has gone back into exile after he signed a Legends contract he was in exile for a while he was waiting for a reason to come to WWE for the first time in 14 years Triple H gave him uh, that reason and he signed for WrestleMania 31 to come in and lose uh, I didn't agree with it I said that for my WrestleMania 31 fallout shoot, and I said for my column on Sting's return to WWE for In This Corner with Jonathan Clark, I believe that we haven't seen the last of Sting, and I hold true to that. I'm going to hold true to that until we see Sting again. Uh, I have come up with a number of suggestions as to how we will see Sting again. Either he'll challenge Seth Rollins uh, for the WWE Championship, or he will face someone like The Undertaker or The Rock or Stone Cold Steve Austin, possibly Brock Lesnar in a match at WrestleMania 32 next year in Dallas. Uh, I would love to see Sting face Seth Rollins for the championship, and I say that because ever since Seth Rollins became the champion, he hasn't really had any competition uh, thrown his way. And I think with how he's been taking shots at how Triple H has been afraid of Sting week after week, uh, and he hasn't had a confrontation with Sting up until now, I think it would be great. I think it would fit perfectly with how Seth Rollins is champion to have a confrontation with Sting leading up to a match possibly at the 2016 Royal Rumble, which will probably feel for many of you like CM Punk versus The Rock from the Royal Rumble in 2013. I don't blame you if you feel like that in response to my possibility of Sting versus Seth Rollins scenario here. Uh, but the thing is, you know, if you're a diehard fan of Sting, who really cares how we see Sting and who he competes against? We would just want to know when we're going to see Sting again and who he's going to compete against if we're diehard fans of Sting. That's really all we wanted to know about The Rock. When, where, and who The Rock was going to compete against was the biggest question because we didn't see enough of The Rock when he announced his return back in 2011. That was four years ago. And how many times have we seen The Rock? He wrestled five times. And he comes back every year, usually now, for WrestleMania to give someone a rock bottom or to cut a promo. Just recently, uh, he was involved in a segment with The Authority, and nothing was done with it after. We don't see enough of The Rock. Uh, so I think that we would see more of Sting if he were WWE Champion in a program with Seth Rollins. But, you know, I think that even though it feels like Rock versus CM Punk for all of you, if you're a diehard fan of someone like Sting, you're going to go for it anyway because we're going to see Sting, especially with the promo he dropped on the network, which I keep going back to, of how he was going to reach out and grab anything WWE threw his way. Don't blame him uh, for doing that, especially after he lost and went down swinging against Triple H. He's definitely deserving of an opportunity at the championship or another big match in WWE. And, of course, there's the very popular scenario that wrestling fans want. They chanted The Undertaker during the promo in the follow to WrestleMania 31 on the network with Sting and Renee Young. Renee Young questioned his future with WWE. He didn't respond to The Undertaker chance. That was really interesting. Great wrestling psychology there uh, from Sting. He, you can bet he heard the chance of Undertaker during the promo. Uh, but I think it would be great to see Sting versus Undertaker, even if it was Undertaker's last match. It's the perfect opponent for The Undertaker to have in his last match. And I think there's no better icon to retire The Undertaker than Sting because of the similarities of their characters. And I would go for a lot of other opponents for Sting as well. John Cena, Randy Orton, Brock Lesnar. Uh, that's a big one too. Brock Lesnar versus Sting. That would be a great match. John Cena versus Sting has also been debated uh, over the years. Who has the decisive advantage? Of course, Sting has the experience. Sting also has a decisive weight and size advantage. We're going to see uh, if this match happens along with all the other predictions we could make for an opponent for Sting. Uh, but there are very popular ones. The Undertaker match is one, and a match with Seth Rollins is one I'm throwing your way as well. Although we have a better chance of seeing Taker versus Sting in a match where Icon versus Icon or Phenom versus Phenom takes place. Legend versus Legend. Call it what you want. Don't really care what some title you put on this, what kind of tagline uh, you include with it. Uh, but it would be a great match. Before we see that, Seth Rollins versus Sting would be great because it would give us a chance to set up for a championship match between Sting and The Undertaker. And if The Undertaker was going to win, there's no better way to go out than to go out on top. And I think The Undertaker, if there ever was someone who's deserving of going out on top, it is definitely The Undertaker. But I just want to see Sting return because, you know, the way he was treated at WrestleMania 31 uh, was ridiculous. You know, I didn't accept it. It took me literally weeks to accept the fact Sting had lost. I was talking about it day after day after day to friends. I was talking about it to myself day after day after day. I was writing about it frustratedly in my column for In This Corner with Jonathan Clark. I was wondering, you know, where do we go from here? Uh, because the obvious suggestion to have happened in the fallout of WrestleMania 31 is usually what they do. Have someone making a debut come in and win. 
uh, their very first match to gain momentum. And obviously Sting didn't want to win. Obviously Sting takes great pride in losing matches because he's lost a lot of matches. It's significant for Sting to lose uh, in his career. That's been noted over the years. And with Triple H going in, the thing that I overshadowed uh, going into Sting versus Triple H was that Triple H was on a losing streak and he hadn't won a match since WrestleMania 29 back in 2013. That's when his career was on the line in his match with Brock Lesnar. And I kept overshadowing that. I didn't want to accept the fact that Triple H actually had a chance of winning without Sting had a decisive advantage. But there were more, I guess, obvious variables pointing in the direction that Triple H was going to win. The losing streak being one and how Sting was always getting the better of him week after week and playing these psychological mind games, demonstrating great wrestling psychologiness uh, against Triple H. Obviously, they were pointing us in the direction of Triple H winning the match. And many of us, if we were diehard fans of Sting, didn't want to believe it. And of course, as a result of the fall of the WrestleMania 31, I was utterly pissed off and disgusted uh, with WWE. I was pissed off with every executive member of the board in WWE, even more so pissed off over Triple H making the decision to put himself over uh, in this match. Another way for Triple H to put him over, as he has many times uh, in the years. It seems like Triple H has been handed everything, in my opinion. That's why uh, I'm so pissed off over everything Triple H does, especially as an executive member of the board, even more so than he has been in recent years. It's been for storylines with the Van Helmsley era back in the early thousands, late 90s, uh, but more so now he's an executive authority, and I think that you know it's just absolutely ridiculous how we always find ways to put himself over. I think he does it more than enough, and I think it's definitely been overkilled how Triple H is always the man, how he's always the one who comes out on top. He didn't need to come out on top over Sting. He could have went one more loss, but one more loss in the loss column of his win-loss record, and then he could have defeated somebody else in the fallout of WrestleMania 31 when he turned into a face, which obviously he's turning into because of his opinion towards people like Seth Rollins being champion and how the authority are conducting themselves as executive members of WWE's board. It's absolutely ridiculous how WWE are following up WrestleMania 31. I described WrestleMania, what was interesting about my review of WrestleMania, I described WrestleMania 31 as the worst WrestleMania since at least WrestleMania 22 or 27, uh, which were disastrous in their own respectives, but uh, this had to be the most disastrous WrestleMania I had seen in years. You know, we all thought The Rock was coming in at WrestleMania 27 to do something utterly amazing. He didn't follow through with that, and it seemed like WrestleMania 31 didn't follow through with anything uh, we thought was going to happen. An NWO Wolfpack reunion, we didn't see that. The NWO and DX got involved in the match, but did we see a reunion of the NWO Wolfpack? We got nothing but uh, disgrace uh, of the NWO Wolfpack and the Generation X. We didn't see no reunion of either a uh, major wrestling faction. We didn't see a war bring up between the NWO or DX, which was predicted as one of the fallouts of this match. A reunion of WCW and WCW taking over Monday Night Raw and turning it into Nitro was something else uh, that was expected. But I guess our ridiculous predictions in the fallout of WrestleMania 31 is the result of what happened because, you know, everybody thought this was going to happen, that was going to happen, and Triple H was just laughing at us, you know, reading our predictions and hearing our predictions for our video blogs on YouTube saying, you know, let's give them something they don't expect. Let's give them me coming out on top. And that's obviously what happened because he believes we don't have an understanding of politics when it comes to the proverbial closed doors in WWE. What he doesn't realize is we as radio shows and columnists have more of an understanding of politics than we're ever given credit for or ever will uh, be given credit for. And politically, Triple H is always going to be the man to come out on top. That's obviously just a realization many of us have great difficulty accepting, and I wish that Triple H wasn't the man to come out on top. More so, I'd like to see John Cena coming out on top than I ever would uh, Triple H, because I go back to when he was a world champion all the time on the Raw brand. He was always champion. He was always losing the title within three weeks, winning it back, like John Cena is doing now for the new talent. He's of losing a title, winning it back within three weeks, always winning when he's champion, eventually getting to a point, a pivotal point where he loses and then wins it back within three weeks. If you go back to 2004, 2005, that was happening all the time, just as Triple H winning all the time was happening under the direction of Evolution, uh, leading that faction with Randy Orton, Batista, and Ric Flair. You had Ric Flair, the experienced veteran, and you had upstarts like Batista and Orton trying to make names for themselves. But, you know, behind closed doors, it was always Triple H uh, being the man. And that's what this kind of puts me in mind of this whole situation uh, with Sting. So, you know, I think Sting needs to be rewarded uh, for the phenomenal performance and the effort uh, going down swinging against Triple H. And I think the better way uh, of, uh, you know, rewarding Sting would be giving him an opportunity at the championship and giving him more something meaningful to do because you better believe Sting didn't sign a contract to come back and lose. And if he did sign a contract to come back and lose every match, what was the point 
uh, Sting even coming back. You know, I'd love to see Sting win, winning more uh, than what he is, and I'd love to see Sting treated better than what he's been treated since his return. Yes, he's had a psychological advantage when you talk about wrestling psychology over Triple H, but really, did we get what we wanted out of WrestleMania 31? You know, I told so many people, I can't even tell you how many people, I told you that I was pissed off uh, about WrestleMania 31. I told literally everybody who I got into a conversation about WrestleMania 31 with, uh, that I was pissed off over the fall of the WrestleMania 31, and I still am uh, pissed off over the fall of the WrestleMania 31. With Sting absent from WWE now, what do we have to look forward to? Triple threat match after triple threat match after triple threat match. That's something else uh, that pisses me off. Randy Orton, Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins in a triple threat match. Didn't we see a triple threat match at WrestleMania 31? Didn't we see a triple threat match last year at WrestleMania 30? Way too many triple threat matches, and the only reason why we're seeing too many triple threat matches is because people like Sting and The Undertaker are never there uh, to give us legend versus legend all the time. And if they were there all the time, we'd be seeing that as opposed to triple threat matches, and I'd go uh, for that. That's why Sting can't get back fast enough, in my opinion, because the same thing is happening all the time. It's either the same kind of angle or it's the same kind of matches all the time. Roman Reigns versus The Big Show, Randy Orton versus Seth